Well, hello, and welcome to Stop, Let's Team Up. Hi, it's me, Ross, again, and I'm here with Ron from Fantastic Comic Fan. Say hi, Ron. Hello, everybody. It's glad, great to be back again. It's good to have you. And we're going to be talking about the final arc of the bronze. The, if you buy it in a trade, it's called the Bronze Age Teen Titans, because the Teen Titans took a pause for a couple of years, for a few years, and came back and did this short run. Um, and this is the last Titans before Wolfman and Prez put their stamp on it and change it drastically. So um, we're going to talk about cover ge- generally issues 50 through 53, the final five, four issues of the book. Um, uh, and I'm going to start as I got these when I was a kid. These were one of those like hand, my brother handed me comics. Here's the Teen Titans. And I had we had had a handful of Haney and Cardi issues in the house. Yes, I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was a sh- this was definitely a very different. It was more like I was reading a Marvel comic in a way. You know, a little background as I was looking through and I was digging through the back stuff. The original Titans ran from '66 to '72 before that pause. And it's like they really never knew what to do with that title back then in the 60s and early a- 70s. It was like, first it was the sidekicks, then let's take their costumes away. And then for like the last 10 issues from 32 to 43, it became one of them spooky themed comic books where it was like the monster every month. And it was a Scooby gang. Yeah, yeah, it was basically the Scooby gang. And yeah, actually, yeah, the Scooby gang, yeah. 50 years ago, this, well, actually 50 years ago, last month in November, was the last issue of that. 50, 43 where they took a big break for like almost four years yeah yeah they and, were gone from 72 through 76 and i think they were just they were trying i think it's since 77 this is their first attempt to kind of get oh x-men's doing well it's making money you have a team you've got this you know they kind of, kind of compared it to you know i think as they wanted a new team book and well they, i think they're a little late to the game and that wasn't no, I thought this book was originally part of the DC implosion and newer it's fans. Not, is should... it? No, it's not. Yeah, it's not. I didn't think no, I thought, I thought so too it until was. I read it and went, this is nowhere near the implosion. No, um, people who, who are new to comics should go and look up the DC implosion. It was a uh, they, thing that yeah, happened in They were just seven. getting shit right and then they blew yeah, it up. They, <laughs> and Two Marvels Publishing has a really good, like, multi. I haven't bought that one. I really it's want called that a book. DC implosion. They bring a bunch of the old people from back then, explain how it all happened and everything. It's a really a great historical read. Two Marls does great stuff. Oh god! Um, but the the revival came through because Jeanette Kahn came on in '76 and became the publisher, and she was there for the next 26 years. Did she a did good know- job. She good steward. She I always liked her. Good steward of the company. Yep. She no I've nobody been publishing knows and I know how to make money. You nobody guys knows about her anymore. Everybody thinks about Jim Lee and Dan DeDito and Paul Levitz. Oh God. Yeah. And she Paul Levitz, was, she, Levitz was her good right hand. I think yep. I think that company is at its best when it's her and Levitz. I think because I think a yep. lot of post crisis stuff. Yep. I never read solo books until post crisis. You know. <laughs> She she had did a lot of initiative. She she actually went through the old catalog. She helped spearlight the Titans coming back. She also convinced uh, the corporate company to keep publishing comic books. I didn't know that, but they were like thinking about not doing comic books anymore. And she's like, "Oh no no no, you've got to keep doing comic books." And I didn't know that until I did some research about um, Jeanette at the time. So yeah, she, but, I mean, like, she was. That's what I think. It was good. Is she marketed? She yep. She knew she, she was. She knew that she owned intellectual properties, and I know how to manage that. Yep. You know, I don't need to understand the pro- end product. I just know that people want to read stuff about Superman and Batman and the Justice League. And, and this issue, this run of Teen Titans, lasts for ten issues, and it was entirely run and done by Bob Rosakis, who's another writer workhorse writer that went through the 70s and wrote everything and did, dabbled everywhere never and, had his own but this is the only thing i know that i read of his that was his book it, he did some other stuff but not a whole lot and i can't remember he what was, he did I remember him didn't he do guy. didn't he do freedom fighters too no that was no 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 that was that jerry, was a lot of people but he wrote a few of them but jerry <laughs> jerry conway had his wasn't jerry conway had his jerry own conway book. was supplying the plots and bob rizakis okay. uh, yeah i think i said something i said something mean about him but and, um, uh, and Marty scolded me and and, and Bob yeah and Bob Rosakis did all ten issues 
but they never had a, a regular art team. They had six different pencilers and inkers throughout the whole 10 issue run. Well, this story, what we're going to talk about is the main story, the Titans East, Titan West, is Don Heck. Don Heck. And I think he did the most run. I of- do not know. Yeah. And the, and the last guy, I don't know. I didn't rec- re-recognize his name when I read the last issue. And I've never read, seen anything else done by him. And so. this was a time when the Teen Titans consisted of Kid Flash, Wonder Girl, Rob and Speedy, Mel Duncan, Bumblebee, the Harlequin. I love the Harlequin. I never thought she ever got her. Oh, they just kept screwing due. it up more. They kept yeah. digging a hole and then digging it deeper when they tried to fix her. Um, I like, kind of like, though, the end one, doing my research that her... Folks, she was primarily known as the Joker's daughter. That was her hero name. She wasn't yes. a villain. She They thought she was. And then she said, my last name's Dent, but that makes her Harvey Dent's daughter. But so that she's a little old though. for that. She shows up at Donna's wedding and she's like 40. Yeah, and, and plumped and everything. I'm like, geez. And then What's she was, fun? what are you doing? And ultimately they said she was the, the Joker's, do- the jokester, who was the Joker of our threes daughter right yeah i like that yeah i like that and just leave it the hell alone and it was you know this is a uh, it was a a a good run and then uh, in issue 50 which i love the cover because it's a classic cover because it's uh, like i remember i think i think this is the first one of this era i saw because i remember that cover it's a white cover nothing else but the heroes on one side of the cover and the the titans west on the other side of the cover and the Titans West, they weren't like great characters. They were like scraping I the had bottom to to, of the barrel of sidekicks yeah, and re, team re, what, characters. What's that lineup? It's it Betty was, Kane. It was uh they had Golden Eagle, uh Betty uh Kane, which is the black bat girl. Bat girl with the hyphen, bat Beast, hyphen girl, beast boy, golden eagle, um Gnark. Lilith? He, no, and Lilith was the other one. Narc was later on. They brought him in for a little bit. But it's like, I mean, I didn't realize that DC really didn't have very many teen characters at all. They didn't. They I, didn't. I mean, yeah. he, this is it. And Mal uh, has gone through from when he got there. I mean, Mal from his introduction, it, he's Mal Duncan. He's just a, a guy, an athlete. Then they give him Gabriel's horn. Yeah. And he um, became Guardian for a while. And, and then he was Guardian. And then they gave him this costume in this run when he had Gabriel's horn, which was frighteningly bad. Yes. It was frighteningly bad. And then, and then even his Guardian's costume had the exoskeleton on the outside, and it just looked like it was a 10-year-old designed it. It was it, really... You know, the, 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 the Titans West people didn't have some of the greatest costumes either. You, you had Golden Eagle... Up to this point, he had only been in one other comic book. He looks like a, let's just give Hawkman it's, a sidekick. It's like a bad cosplay. Yeah, it's a horrible. Oh, it's a- and, and the Golden Eagle, even after he was in these these three issues of Titans, he never amounted to anything. He eventually he was showed killed. up in like one Titans issue. He died yeah. as a member of the Titans. They, yeah. you know, he died in some, he died in, cri- did he die in crisis? No, he died in a storyline called Titan's Hunt, which was actually a pretty good, it was actually overall good. Um, it just took forever. It's easier to read yeah. in the collection. Yep. Because it took like, what, three and a half years? <laughs> oh, you know what? We forgot. They had Hawk and Dove, too, as part of this team. Now, and Hawk they had and... been mainstays in, ti- in the later run of Titans. Yeah. You know, I went onto the DC app, and we were talking about this before we were taping, and they, it's actually a great app because they just dumped thousands of comic books there. The oh, problem yeah. is you can't find the comic books because the, you have to do some wonky, archaic searching to find the stuff. Because I was trying to find the Hawk and Dove. I was like, I know the trade paperbacks there, and I know that they have the first six issues of the um, Hawk and Dove. This was a Steve Ditko creation that people don't realize. And oh yeah, the, they actually had the Silver Age um, collection. They have the Showcase issue also a part of it. So you get that and the whole Ditko run, their first appearance in Titans. And this is the original Hawk and Dove. And Hawk and uh, Dove was actually his brother. And they weren't around. And you had Beast Boy, who's now Changeling. Now, he's, he's, he's popular now. But back then, he hadn't been around since the Doom Patrol died. And he had the crappiest costume. He had this, this big... He had the basic perp- t- 
the the purple mask on top of the green head. You, he's skin got a green with head. The Doom Patrol user. Yeah, he's got a green head with green hair, and he's got this huge. Why do you need a purple mask? We know who you are. We, you know. Yeah. And I was so excited that they brought in Batgirl, the original Batgirl. I had to, when I read this first, I had to go to my, we had the Mike Fleischer. Is it Mike Fleischer? Michael Fleischer? Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Yep. I had to look her up. Yep. Because my brother was like, oh, no, no, Dick Sprang. Because my brother is the one to tell me about, you know, here's the greatest artist ever. And he'll like, and he has some obscure ones like Dick Sprang and Wayne. He turned me on into I, fans of them. But I had to go back and it was from that era of Detective. At the, the same 50s. time. At the same time as this was coming out, they had the the Batman anthology from the 30s to the 70s, and they had a lot of Batgirl and Batwoman's are early they, appearances oh, in, in that? that. And that's my how brother I has my, that. I don't. I wish I had that book. It, we had a uh, bunch of those because those are the early trades. I mean, yeah, you would get these weird, wonky, weird collections. Make mine Marvel. Yes, I remember that. And I had that Secret Origins. The. Uh, the the only thing I thought was a little bit weird was Beast Boy looked a lot older than he was. And the same thing with Betty. Betty looked to be in her 20s, not like 19. She looked to be a lot older. And Yeah, well, that's kind of the problem with Titan books, even up until like Wolfman and Perez spend three years inching them further to adulthood until they can drop the word teen. Yeah, and I think, and if I remember right, they never wanted the word "teen" in the title. No, they never no, they did. Didn't. They were like, nope. "We cannot make them teenagers." They have been around for thirty years, uh, but they said that's what our trademark is. We own it. We're going to use, use it. it. <sighs> going to use it, but they inched it away, and you know, I, and, I mean, it, it is you know, and I'm I'm a huge Perez Wolfman run. I mean, I like Wolfman's run because I read it after Perez left, and I do like the Titans Hunt. And the Grummet years and the Edward Barato years. Yes. I mean, it was a solid book for a hundred issues. It was a great title. It was a great title. And then title. it lost its way. Well, yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah, once he, once Wolfman left, it really was all over the place. Um, it, I did, it, it doesn't really recover until Jeff Johns has it for, for about five while. years. Yeah. yeah. And then it dies again. And I never have, I have not read it regularly since John's life. You One, know, they, New 52 was terrible. Oh, the new fifty. What they did, what they did the Titans to me was really it didn't speak to me, and I was like, I can't. I don't even know who these people are. I actually just read not too long ago the Teen Titans iteration that had Damian Wayne as the leader. I've read nice things about that. I read I just that. Have never read it. I read it from from start to finish a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, you know what? This is actually a lot better than I thought it was. And some of the characters that I really didn't know about much about. Actually, we're really cool characters. It's more, it's really more of a character study of Damian Wayne than it is. It was a solo book with extras in it, right? Yeah, he's, well, it's, he's definitely the focus. He was definitely the focus, and you can actually see the Damian Wayne today and the stuff that's going on. You can trace threads all the way back into this Titans run with with uh, Damian. Yeah, I'm kind of actually looking forward to Lazarus because these are all characters I'm kind of interested in. These newer characters, you know this this. Teen Titans run from 50, 51, and 52. The story overall, in my opinion, actually kind of sucked. It's, it doesn't but, need, I hate to say it, it doesn't need three issues. No, it did. Well, it, it, it sucked. Um, and Mr., his name is Mr. Calamity. Or, and and Mr. Cap, Cla- Captain, Captain, Captain Calamity, Calamity and Mr. Esper. Yeah, it's such a terrible name. But you know what? I wasn't reading it for the story. I was reading it for the characters. You know, you had all these characters that were teaming they, up. I think they're fine. I think I love the actually does a good, it does a I, good I, job. He, it is, what yes. I said earlier, it's very marvelous. It, there was a lot of soap opera going on. And Rosakis did a great job of balancing all these characters. He gave, they all got something to do. It all I mean, made sense. Back um, then you had 17 pages and you're talking over a dozen characters and then they added in the next issue, they added Aqualad and Narc for probably the storyline. But everybody got their bits, everybody got their time. It didn't feel crowded, it didn't feel rushed. Well, the Wally Donna romance always felt kind of skeezy. They're like, ew, what? I, I know that was because it's it almost like their brother and sister type of relationship. Yeah, because later on, that's kind of what they do. Is remember that time we dated? That was awkward. It's like, yeah, you also dated Speedy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. She, she was and, kind of... and then. 
And I listen to uh, Tighten Up the Defense and Hub and Corey are very much, they point out that why is she marrying her community college professor? <laughs> it's sketchy yeah. as hell. It, it's it, sketchy it's like, as okay, hell. Okay, okay then. Well, how old is she supposed to be? Yeah. Because it's that thing about it. But I enjoyed the story. And as a kid, I remember getting this. I was like 13 when these came out. And, you know, I, you know, and I was like, who are these characters? They're great. And, and I had seen some of them because my brother had maybe 10 of the car of the Bahaini Cardi era and which and he goes these are better and they were and I will it, say this because it was always very one and done then yes to have a three part storyline especially then like yeah, the that's Titans. very much a seventies thing and and DC is still learning it I don't think they really they grasp it with certain people Engelhart came over and did it Len Wine did it yes Len Wine moved threads in his what fifteen issue run at Justice League but you can still read each issue by itself yep. Now, Bob Rosakis actually had plans of actually continuing the Titans West and Titans East story, but at the end of 52, the title got canceled, so he had one more wrap-up, which actually was an origin, but he wanted to have uh, a romance between, I think, Batgirl, Harlequin, and Dick Grayson. He wanted, yeah, he wanted Flash to be, Kid Flash to be on both teams because he could go cross-country, but he had a lot of extra stuff played out it's kind of interesting if he actually would have gotten oh four or five more issues we might have never even gotten the teen titans from perez and um, yeah. wolfman at all well they would have had i don't know does is does do you think heck i like don heckart but yeah. i do see a huge difference between 1960s don heckart and yes. 1970s and 1980s yes but you can definitely pick out that oh, i was looking at it. that's don heck that you know it's got his style. I they, just don't think they gave him a good inker, maybe. Well, th- they had, you, they probably did because they were just, they had so many inkers and artists on this title. It just made no sense at all. It, it this is a, a get it out on time. This is something you'd never see anymore, man, because it's that's the get it out on time. It's like, it was every, a, one, every one penciler, we need three inkers. It was a weird time back then because both DC and Marvel had problems putting out books on time especially marvel and when they didn't put the book out in time they got penalized they got really a huge fine for not you know getting the print to the printers on time and that's why especially on marvels that they had a lot of crazy wonky reprints thrown in and and, and weird one in fill issues and over in dc they just threw writers and artists at different titles because back oh, then yeah. they're, it's, they're also covering- trying to they're trying to flood the market. Like that. Still now, they're at, in the seventies. They're trying to flood the market with as much products as they could get out, you know. Yeah. And they really didn't care much about quality at all. Well, I think they didn't really realize that you had to have quality. It was supposed to be disposable. You know, it was that buy it on the comic shop right on the spinner rack. And that's you know, if you go back to some of these creators when they're talking about some of the iconic moments, like you know Gwen Stacy's dying and some of these other things, they're like, no, we didn't think anybody would be talking about it. X amount of years later, we didn't know the comic books would be around in X amount of years. We were just trying to tell stories at the time and trying to just, you know, do yeah. what we could. We didn't think about the future. But oh. this this three issue run is good bronze age wonkiness. It, it is. Should, it should you should not read it as an adult. You should read it as a put. Oh, put it's your definitely kid. they're they're still at this point. It's they're not. It's we we had a long conversation before we started about aging your readers out. It was. No, it's uh, there's the old ten issue. Have you ever heard of the ten year rule? Mm-mm. There's a thing with con- with the publishers, and I don't, I can't remember. I read it in an article year decades ago about it. The reason why, like DC, had a rule where Superman appeared exactly ten years ago, every issue. Okay, that that's how from when he came to where you at now is ten years into his career. That's and you just have to kind of keep mushing and mushing and mushing the continuity into that 10 year period because they would say Superman is 29. Yeah. Or Batman was 29, 32. They're all like, right. They haven't become 30, which is really old to kids. So you always wanted to keep them on that side. This is an adult, but a young, you know, in their twenties, but you only have your audience for about 10 years. You have them between about six and 16. So would it you is. consider 
Batman and Superman actually being in there, they got to be a lot older now. Oh, no, because I'm six. I'm 58 years old. Yeah. I'm almost 60. To me, well, they're in their mid 40s and they're in good shape. What is, yeah. you know, whatever. I can't imagine. I don't know. I don't think. DC but I don't think it. I ever bought it when I read that, because when I read that, no. I was in my 20s and I went, no, I don't see that. That's, I can't you know, see Superman and Batman. They got to be at least close to 40 now because of all their. Yeah. Oh, God. Stuff. I mean, you know, and he's had so many. Batman's had so many children that he's put in danger you know it's three generations yeah, you know? and, three but days. i but i understand what they're doing because they really the the model and the reason this comic is not for adults is you were trying to cap you were giving you wanted to give something that a 60 year old and a 16 year old could both read and be entertained by you know it, it's interesting that the batman family has remained intact and stable all these years and the poor superman family gets tossed into the washer every few years Spun, I just don't think out. anybody really knows. They never put. I mean, I'm not a Supergirl fan, and I have a lot of. I, you know, Marty's big Super Supergirl fan, and there's. I got a couple friends on Twitter, and it's like, I read a lot of comics with Supergirl in it, but I never was that fan. And they bring up good points about how they're bad. That character is badly written from time to time. There are very few, and I want to say something. This, unless it's been written by a woman. I don't remember it. Right. And maybe, but you know, it's like Mark was it Peter David did a run, which I read. Yeah. And she was an angel for about 80 issues. He did. It was, was actually good, pretty good. It was entertaining. And you know, it wasn't, it, it wasn't Supergirl. No, it wasn't Supergirl, but because, you know, back, but it's like, because after crisis, DC got into this big thing with both Batman and Superman, just wiping out the mythos from scratch. And let's just, you know, start all over again. We can't. Well, have I mean, a... that's. I never understood why they got rid of. I mean, I understand killing off characters. I think Barry should still be dead. Yeah, I think, and I don't. I think Kara should be dead, and there should just be a new Supergirl. Just if you're going to kill him, keep him dead. That's uh, never, because there's no, and if there's no. Yeah, I know they're always going to bring him back ten years later. I mean, I understand you don't kill Batman, you don't kill Superman. You that you think they're dead. They have a soap opera death, but. Oh. But, you know, it's like the ty- these times is that they're static. And, you know, and, and once it gets to the mar- when the talent for Marvel comes over from DC to DC. They're actually allowed to grow for the first time. Yeah, because it's like I'm coming and you're going to let me write the way I've been writing over there. Because and then me and George, look, this is George Perez. I'm Marv Wolfman. I'm pretty popular writer. And, you know, the more I read of his other stuff, it's like going, why isn't he like more... I mean, he's a lot of people hate him because of what he did in Crisis. Yes. But he was doing, you know, they wanted a big story and he did, did what he was, he did. He goes, okay, this is, how's this? Okay, kill him. And it's still a great story. It is a great story. It's and, one you of know, the best everybody came ever. back. He also knew it, damn comic books. He, I bet he did not think Barry Allen would be dead for 30 years. No. I don't think he thought that for a second. He's at 10 years max. Yep. He brought back people. He said, okay, they're I'm bringing it back. Because I like that. I'm a big fan of that era of Superman. The Diamond era. Yeah, well, and yeah, and from Burn, the Burn stuff's okay. It gets better as they get more and more talent in it. Once Ordway, Wolfman Ordway's book's good. When Louise Simonson yeah. comes in, Roger Stern, Dan Jurgens, You got John Bogner, B. Carrie Gamino. The, the Diamond, these, the, the, the people who don't know about the Diamond era is all the Superman books were written by different people, but they were all connected like a soap opera. And there was literally every year a diamond awesome. on the corner. Yep, <laughs> I loved there was it. A, there was a diamond up on the corner. One, two, three, four, Through five. 12. No, yep. what, 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 52. 48. It was 48. No, then it went to 48 and then it went to 52. And that went on for years. I loved it. I and absolutely it, loved it. Legion was like that too. And it made it, and it worked. And it, it made it you be great. able to understand. See, there's thing is, and then we have the 90s or the early 2000s where they said, kill, cut, there is no reason for continuity. Just write what you want. And I think it damaged some care. I think some real, da- I think some real damage was done to characters. Because you, you know, and, and Marvel and, does a better job of honoring their continuity and their. Yeah, but I'm thinking of them as the big evil when I'm talking about that in the early 2000s, when they went talent over talent over continuity. Yeah, uh, they that, messed. That, I'm a. I'm that, you're right. It, it Remember what they did with Thunderbolts? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you ever read it. Thunderbolts ends, and then they make it about pro wrestling people with superpowers. None of the characters were ever Thunderbolts. They were never super villains, and it. They brought in uh, uh, a crudy and all these these new hip guys, and we're going to do something 
cool and edgy and people went, this is stupid. And why does it have anything to do with the book that I've enjoyed for a hundred, for 80 issues? 80 issues. Now, you know, I'm a big, one of my big mantras is every era of comic books should be read. Golden age, silver oh, yeah, age, yeah. and the context of the times. Now, taking that as the context of the times, what would you give this three issue arc of Titans as a grade? Where it's the era of DC super team, it'd get a C. C. It's C. not bad though. It's not bad, but I mean, I'm. This is also the era of of Lynn Watt. No, this is post Lynn. Yes. Who's writing Justice League at this point? Would it be care? If if if, if it would be Jerry, if if it's it's either after if it would be it'd be after Conway. Space. This is satellite era. It, well, I think it went. Um, uh, Jerry Conway was. First it was Ingo Hart and then it was Jerry Conway. I think that this is actually somewhere near the um well, I'm actually gonna look it up. I think this is somewhere near the uh 77 would be the Denny O'Neill? No, Denny no, no. O'Neill. It would be either 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 Ingerhart or uh Jerry Conway here. But the sad I think the sad because you I because DC didn't do good super team books justice league was a good super team there wasn't a whole lot of good dc a lot of times in the set this is this was in the middle of the uh englehart all right that's a really good era yeah this was englehart um because i'm actually on anybody who wants to look at a really great website y'all go to mike's newsstand where you can actually do year month and figure out what's coming out and i was actually looking at april may of ninth oh Gosh, there's so many great stuff that came out here. Yeah, it was uh yeah, it was during the Engelhart. I was looking at just this before this arc of uh I was looking at Teen Titans 49. I'm just like, oh my gosh, just all these great comic books that are out at the time that's like I can't I gotta close the window up. But yeah, it was during Engelhart's <laughs> run. So right yeah, I mean Engelhart's it was okay. Run. I enjoyed it. You know, I'm it was given to me, you know, a lot of this is I'm still a kid. I'm not buying these myself. Well, you know what? These are on the DC app. I wouldn't necessarily suggest somebody to go uh, read them. I mean, buy them, but read them because they're good. I had thought I, about getting the Bronze Age Omni, which is just this run 43 to 53. I, the, I whole, to. the whole 43 to 53 is a good read. I wouldn't necessarily buy it. Yeah, that, that, that it basically said, eh. No, maybe because, if I see a if I'm in on Ollie's and they've got a fit, they've got a black yeah, and white showcase of it. But it's on the DC app. Read it. It's a fun little read. It is. What did you think of the the secret origin? I've never. I mean, it was them trying to write a, sil- a silver age comic. Bob Rosakis, um at the end of that 50, issue fifty two. To me, it's an iconic run of they, they have a picture, almost like a photo of all the Teen Titans. He's like that's basically my run of Teen Titans. Like, well, you got one more issue. He didn't want to do any kind of storyline. There'd never been a Titans origin before. So he basically used that as a template. And you're right. It was kind of Silver Age. And it was kind of, I I know at least once or twice more, they they took the origin and- Yeah, they did year one, which I didn't read. I saw it in in, in the online that this, that's a retelling of this little fleshed out. See, I'm not sure. And I know that they had another origin. I didn't know if it was a retelling or a fleshing out. Because I know when, uh, during the same period right here, uh, the Justice Society and the DC Special got their very first origin, which to me was a great read. Oh, my God. But see, I will. Okay. Another thing. If this is coming out about the same time as yes. Justice Society is, they're doing, those Justice Society by Levitz and Giffen and Wood and then Stanton are, they're A+. plus. Yes. All right. They're they, A+. Plus. They're probably the best Except for Justice League, because Eagle was doing Justice League. No, Justice League and the um, All Star Squadron was probably the two best titles that DC was putting out at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only reason why that All Star got canceled when we lost the JSA is because of DC implosion. That yeah, was right that around was, the And it ended up in that great, but it ended up in that great adventure comics, which was a dollar and it was like fat thick. And you got Aquaman, Dead Man, and Justice Society in it. I kind of like those. <laughs> there were some, there were some good side effects to the implosion. Yeah. I did like the 100 page issues. It's a couple of things. Yeah. The DC Comics had back then for, well, because this Titans run was 17 pages. That was just your standard comic book back then was 17. Then for Steve Englehart, they created the giant format. So he had stories about like 30, 35 pages in Legion and Super Team Families, another one. 
And then these dollar comics. Now the original dollar comics was eighty pages for a dollar of all oh, yeah, new material. Blew my mind. Nowadays that would be a fourteen dollar comic. Yep. Yeah. And they had a huge staple of all these big dollar comics. Adventure comics was a dollar for a while. Superman House Family. of Mystery. House of Mystery was. Um, Batman Family was a dollar comic that saved Detective Comics because DC was going to cancel Detective because it was a low selling title. That is a good comic too. I and they. It. Yep, and they said, "Well, let's let's merge Batman Family, which was a better selling title than Detective Comics." And so, for about a year, they merged Batman Family with Detective, and Detective became a dollar comic. Also, right. <clears throat> is there anything else you want to say uh, about? No, uh, I mean, I think they're worth reading. I think if you're, you know, I like the app, and I like the Ultra. I mean, I'm gonna get it's, it's more dollar for my buck. There, I'm, I'm reading Gaiman. I've never read it. I can go back and read these. Uh, you know, even before when Ultra, I read the Jerry Conway Challengers of the Unknown. These are, you can find a lot of weird. I think one reason the app is, it is just they're just throwing stuff at you as you scroll through the main screen, and then you have to look, and they throw other things at you. It's like, does is this really connected to what I asked you to show me? No, exactly. <laughs> Speaking of the Challengers, they also have Kirby's run of Challengers. Of the just Unknown. Kirby's and Conways. Yep. Nothing in between. Nothing but they didn't have Kirby on there before. I mean, they got it as a trade paperback now. And they've got Kirby's Boy Commandos as a trade paperback on there, too. So, yeah, I'm really, that's something I want to kind of go look. You know what I've never read is Boy's Ranch. No. Oh, that's which, that too. That's really pretty. Is that if that's that DC doesn't own that, do they? No, kind of, DC doesn't own that at no, all. Which but it, I, that's probably his public domain. But yeah, but no, I'm, I'm excited because I'd like. DC to throw this stuff on there because it's be historical. You know, a few months ago before we wrapped this up, I had Jennifer DeRoss on. We were talking about Gardner Fox writing the he wrote the very first issues of Detective Comics. You know, yeah, he I invented, never I never knew that until I read her book. Yep, and he he invented the uh Batman utility belt. Well, those early issues exist in a digital format, but they were part of the golden age of Batman story. And up until this past Ultra Drop, that volume wasn't even on the app. They wouldn't even, and that's the other thing, DC won't strip out stories and issues that are already in digital format. Strip the issues out, put them on there. And it's it's just, not that hard. You can hire a bunch of 18 year old high school kids to do it for you. Marvel for does that. Every time Marvel releases a trade, if it's not part of the Marvel Unlimited, within a couple of weeks, it goes there. Last month or the week, month before, they had the last Daredevil. Early in the year, they had, had the last Defenders. DC doesn't doesn't do that very often. Well, I think what DC is, and we were talking a little bit about Mr. Zaslav uh, before we started. I think what he's trying to do is copy Disney. His ultimate goal is to put all of his product on one site. That said, and I think that is what he wants with Warner Discovery, is that you're going to have a, here's, and whatever they own, here's to CNN, here's Turner Classic Movie, here's HBO, here's Discovery Channel, all on one platform like Disney does. Disney's the one streaming service in our house. When we go to rebudget, we don't go, let's get rid of it. Cause it's got too much content on it. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So he's going to, I think that's his game plan. I think that is the idea of streaming is you're going to get to bigger and bigger platforms. I think he's um, going to be a better caretaker of the DC properties than at and I think he was. doesn't care. I think he is ultimately by not caring because he doesn't, I think he carries about the bottom line. Well, here's the thing. DC Comics as a whole, whether they put comics out or don't put comics out, and I've said this before, on the bottom line, they're just a rounding error as far as their publishing division. All the oh, comics- yeah, yeah, it's nothing. They, they, they're the it, reason it, they've it, hired. They're gonna. They finally decided to pick one person to be in charge of yep. the film and animated. Yep, and I think the choices are good. James down. Gunn and his partners, Mister, I think forget Saren or Safin. And that's going to filter down to the comic books eventually because yeah. you see some changes starting to finally filter into I, the comic books. Uh, who, I don't know who's the editor, who's in charge of DC now. I don't comics. think there's anybody. I think Jim Lee still is, but it's like I don't know who's like the creative director now that Dan, Dan DeDio left and, it's and Jeff like, Johns is yeah Jeff Johns is just a writer he's not the chief creative officer anymore no but, I think it, 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 it to me it seems like they're going to a simpling down simplifying of things I, um, I, I'm hoping we'll get some really good product starting in January well, that's I really think, good stuff like a really good legion of superheroes sorry that's not happening I know that book's not coming back no, no I don't want I'm that. Not, I'm not talking about that legion. I'm, I'm talking another reason. No, I don't think any legion's coming back. You don't think any legion? I don't. I think we're John's is going to give us a taste of what his, because we're going to see past, present, and future in Justice Society. 
That's already said. That's We've true. seen a justice society from the 30th, 30th century, 31st century. We've seen it. He's going to set, he is going to test drive it because the Bendis is a failure. I hate to say it, it, but a lot of Bendis' DC stuff was a lot of a failure. He had some good stuff. Some of his Superman was good. His Young Justice was good. Naomi, I enjoyed. Rest of it is hit or miss. But that's, I think that's his career. Yeah. I think that's not just DC. I think it's Marvel too. I think he is hit very hit and then miss, miss. So this is your podcast. You were supposed to be talking about that. I think, but you know, I think, you know, uh, I like these. These are fun. They're fun. They're not. They're not the greatest Teen Titans because what you've got because the Nick Cardi Bob. Be. Yeah, but but I mean they are book ended between the Haney Cardi. Yes, which is weird as they were were entertaining as hell. They were, and the George Prez, Marv Wolfman, which is tier one superhero team writing. I mean that is Kirby. Lee. It's almost yeah. Kirby Lee. That is Thomas Buscema. That's and it, it, if you read the whole ten issues for this 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 middle run, this book end or this middle run between the two other bookends, the ten issues all connect. You can see plot lines going all the way straight. Yeah, through. they're definitely using the Marvel style, and and I like it. it it's okay. It's interesting and for me because I was reading it with no idea of what the future DC was. Was these were characters yes. I'd never seen, and I had you know. I don't know where my brother got comic reference books in the seventies, but I was able to piece together that, Oh, Hawk and Dove were in this. And then we, yes. Huey, we had the ones where they were in the go-go suits and they're hiding they, their clubhouse is in the coffee bar yep. or wherever it is. And I remember, and I do remember reading that, you know, I got 50, 51, 52 and I says, Oh, this is great. This is the new Titans. This is what they're going to keep doing, which they would have. And I was, as a fan, I was like, this is so cool. All these characters and, and, Unfortunately, like that one last issue and it ended. I I would have loved to have seen this, what what they would have done. I think the they future. could have done something. I'm still not a big Bob Rosakis fan. I mean, he's okay. Would he have done? I don't know what he have done because, like, like you said, he was a he was a he filled holes. Yes, he didn't have any runs. So would this have been? Because I think the story gets better as it goes along. I mean, he's got to use second tier villains. I think is kind of the mandate too because you can't use any of the big guns. No, so, but I enjoy it. I think it's fun reading. It's 70. I'm really discovering recently that I guess the, 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 my formula of year, years of comic reading was 72 to 82. He also wrote, um, the end of the secret society of supervillains. Oh, that's where it's really good. Yeah. That's a great comic folks. That's all on the app now. That all of it, which is funny because they're still stripping out issues, individual issues to put on the app and using that as, as their, we're archiving. Why didn't they just do the see? Why didn't they do those two trades? Because the <laughs> trades know. got the stuff at the end. It's like, I well, know. I had the two trades and I sold them. Well, I, I'm I, sorry. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. They paused the Secret Society in January to go back to Captain Comet. I'm not Captain Captain. I'm Captain Carrot because they ended Captain Carrot with like three issues. That's the wonky stuff that they do. They did all the Roy Thomas, Captain Carrot, and his amazing zoo crew, except for the like the last three issues. And now in January, they're going yeah. back to the next final three issues of that run. It's like, and the other thing about the DC app is they have a really good moderation forum. They have so many topics and things that you can talk about. They and have feel, so leery of forums. I never even thought to check it out. Yeah, they have great forums. And I really feel sad for the moderators because a lot of stuff they're like, I, we can't do anything about it. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, no, go out, check Check out the DC app. There's a lot of good stuff in there. There is. You'll find stuff. I went, it took two days to dump a lot. You know, for what you, what you would have bought for this trade somewhere, you could probably get three, four, five months out of the uh, DC service. Oh, I know. For the, I paid a year. I have to pay a year. Now. Yeah, yeah. It's 99 bucks. That's 10 trades. No, they, wait a minute. That's five trades. Yeah. Well, if you take the $100, because somebody was doing the math, that comes out to uh, less than two bucks a week. A comic yeah. book, you can't get a comic book for two bucks a week. Oh, no, there's going to be stuff, obscure stuff I read. that I've never read, you know, I've, like, again, I've never read Game and Sandman. I'm going to read it and all these silly things. And that's the other thing. Have, they, they dumped I, all the vertical onto this app, too. That was a good, that's a really good thing. Um, all of Mass Sandman Mystery Theater is on there. Yes. I have one of the two trades they did. It's really expensive. I'm going to sell it because they're doing those compendiums. 
yes. paperback. They did two for Starman. They're going to do two Sandman Mystery Theaters. I may buy those, but it's all on the app. I don't really need it. Yeah, there's that's it's something I'm going to read a bunch. Like, you know, there are certain things I'm going to read over and over again. So I like having the copy, but, you know, this is, I mean, it was amazing how much they put out over two days. And there's, I, I'm there's still stuff that's not been done because I got someone showed me a whole list of Legion, Superboy, Supergirl tangent stuff that I don't think's on there. I don't think so either. But again, I, I, cause I know there's, they're putting out the, they did a version of the Bible. And I know that's supposed to be getting dumped down there. Also. I'm kind of curious. It's, I forget who did that. And I've been waiting for that. Oh, to get- Jesus. They're, they're, they're their giant size treasury of the Bible? Yeah, I believe that's getting dumped down there, but I can't oh, I got, I had find that. it yet. I think it's I think it's Ernie Cole. Oh, I think so. But the on DC also dumped all their young adult graphic novels out of the system. Great. Too. See, that's another thing I like that DC has been doing for what, like 10 years now? Not that five years. Yeah. I think it's a great thing. All Get their young- all their kids' graphic novels are now on that can't find them kind of hard to find you have to really i i, I did when i did a teen titan search all the raven starfire ones popped up see okay that makes sense though i mean i i, I know I, I i sent um ross here a, a screenshot of the young adult trades and now i'm going i don't know how i found them in the app at the time i don't know where i'm gonna have to what archaic there were weird are. things that people were finding i found uh the d uh the dc's most wanted Yes, they put they've done a hard cover of it, and yes. it's a great collection of golden and silver age introductions they're, to super villains. Their silver, I'm pretty sure their silver and golden age has really greatly increased on this app because and they of still the, it's still only probably ten percent. Yeah, but I mean, now you've got you know all these big silver and golden age compendium things that are on there if you can find them, like the early yeah, Superman, they, they early do like, detective. They, for Teen Titans, I noticed that Je- there's three of the four, there's three of the six Jeff Johns on these are in there. Two, three, yes. four, and six. I'm sure the uh, other ones are there somewhere. No, I looked. I, I typed in specific and no, I think Not they're yet. missing. I think, but all the issues are on it. I mean, pretty much anything published since 1985 is on there. Pretty much, yes. Yeah, that's the bulk of it is bronze and later. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. Modern. And modern. modern. No, modern because they've got bronze one spotting. They got one Bronze Age of Action Comics. Don't even yeah. get me started on action and adventure. This advent- adventure <laughs> is three Superboys and then like four Jim Shooter, two part Legion ones, and yeah. then the 100 page John. It's awful. You have this crap. Yeah. You have it. I Do did, it as an ad- I did see at least one volume of Silver Age Legion of Superheroes on that app. Yes. Okay. What was it under? I don't remember. I think. Oh, no, the one, one volume with Monel the press cover? That's, no, no. That's this is, silver. It, was that's the silver age, it was the Silver Age one. They have a big collection of Silver Age. Oh, of- oh, it's the trade. Yeah, it's the trade. Ba- it's one yeah. of the trades, uh, yes. the paperback version. And I don't know how many issues are in there, what's in there, or whatever. About 30 issues. So, okay. They did about three or four of them. Yeah, I know okay. what they are. I don't have them because I have the I have all the archives. So this is your podcast, Ross. Do all we right, have anything so that's else it. To say? Are we that done is... today? We, we we were supposed to only talk about three little comic books, and we went yes. again all well, over the place. That's but it's right. good. I enjoy having being on your show. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you know what this? Do you know when this is going to run, Ross? This is going to run a week from the day we record it, which will be just, it'll go up at either the tenth or eleventh of December. All right. Before we wrap this up. Uh, I was not going to do any Christmas episodes, and Ross is actually going to tape from mine. I have uh, just taped, this is the weekend of uh, December 3rd, and I had a person that was supposed to be on back in Halloween, and life just happened, and I contacted him, like, what do you want to do? He's like, well, let's do something Christmassy. So I went through all of my people, I'm like, okay, everybody, let's do something Christmassy. I got a bunch of fans coming on. So Martin Gray does a blog, uh, He's 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 being too called ta- man. too dangerous too dangerous for a girl. Yes, it's a exactly. line from a Jet Legion. Yeah, and he's from Scotland. He's uh, that episode would be out. I'm calling on the man who saved Christmas because without him, I would be doing no Christmas episode. I reached out to Gary Carlson, who does Big Bang comic books, and he will be leading my efforts to uh, do uh, a bunch of episodes. He actually his Big Bang comics put out a holiday special, and I love Gary. He's so much fun, and I've I've got three, four people all lined up. I've, I've caught a bunch of my old guests on there. They're coming in there. Check out the holiday episode. 
basically what it is. Person picks out a holiday comic book, throw it out there. We talk about it. I've got my own picks. Uh, I'm doing a couple episodes where Oprah does her favorite things. I'm doing stuff with my favorite comic books, my favorite episodes, my favorite podcasts. If I get my stuff together, Ross, I've taken so much of your time. <laughs> I apologize. I'm wrapping no, no, this that's up. That's okay. That's okay. I'm wrapping this up. Fantastic <laughs> comic fans on all the podcasts. I will also have a link in his show notes where you can follow me all over the place. Again, Ross, joy to be on your show. Happy holidays. Thank you too, my man. All right, folks, as always, be smart, be safe, please be kind. It's a, it's a holiday, you know, if you can't, don't mean it, fake it. And read some comic books.